day everyone, welcome to Cafe Carnival. What a lovely day it is! Here we are going to introduce a lot of carnival games for you to enjoy the night. Here are the list of the games and the person that will introduce it. First, Knock Down the Bottle by Miss Cassandra. Second, Rick Toss by Miss Jade. Third, Darts by Miss Serene and Mr. G-Boy. Fourth, Card Game by Miss Francine. And the last one, Bottle Up by Miss Margaret. The people I mentioned will be the one that will explain all the things about their choosing game. Listen well because they will also explain about the probability of the game. You will not just enjoy but you will also gain knowledge and trick to win those. Get ready as I call on our guests in the first game. Here's the Knock Down the Bottle by Miss Cassandra. Thank you for the introduction, Miss Marga. Now, let me introduce to you our first game, Knock Down the Bottle. It is a bottle shooting game and this will test your concentration. And you should ready yourself for the estimation too. Because the difficult part here is that you are almost 3 meters away from the bottles. I will tell you first how to play it. You have to focus and target the 3 bottles. When you estimated the force you should release, you can now throw the 3 balls at them one at a time from your throw line. And you have to make it all fall in the ground. And then boom, you win. But first, we have to know the probability of getting a strike. I use a sampling distribution in which a big N represents the place 3 bottles and a small N for the 3 small balls. I will use the formula 3 combine 3 to know the number of samples we should create. And luckily, it looks like we've got the easiest game here in our carnival tonight because we only got one number of samples which are 1, 2, and 3. And that also means that we've got one mean and sample mean which is 2 and our probability of 1 over 1 or we can say 100% of getting a strike. Let me teach you some techniques to knock down all the battles. Aim for accuracy above force. Our carnival frequently employs heavier or bottom weight bottles that are more difficult to break, but you can take all of them by hitting the center bottles on the bottom. Thank you Miss Cassandra for teaching us how to play that wonderful game. Moving on to our next game, let's call Miss Shade to introduce the Ring Toss game. Good day, Fox! Here's another game for tonight that is called Ring Toss. It is a game in which rings are tossed at an upright peg. Points are scored by encircling the peg or coming closer to it than other players. It has been said that the game was played in Roman occupied Britain, 1st to 5th century, or it may have been developed in medieval Britain. Perhaps, when peasants heated and bent horseshoes into rings and tossed them at iron pegs, driven into the ground. Here is how to play it. The first player throws two rings of the same color, one at a time, at the opposite stake. The second player then throws his two rings which are of the other color. Players play in the same order throughout the game. After throwing at one stake, players throw at the other stake and alternate stake on each turn. The probability of winning the game is almost 5 over 169, which is only 3%. But this can be increased if the player is killed and if you get more chances to play. The secret of this game is the quicker you snap your wrist, the better the spin you'll put on the ring. To increase chance of winning, you need to slowly toss one ring at a time, carefully aiming for the center row of bottles. The close proximity and size of spaces between the bottle can make it a tricky game to win. Wow! Nice! I think I'd love to play that game. Thank you so much, Miss Jade. Now, let's call the people who will introduce our third game. Please welcome Miss Rind and Mr. G-Boy. We're going to play Dark Stove. Irene Lanyo will play this game. Five jackpot colors are positioned in a certain position in this game. White with 1 point, blue with 2 points, green 4 points, orange 8 points, and red or the bullseye have 10 points are the colors on the dartboard. Participants are allowed 3 dart strikes in which they must strike the colors white, blue, green, orange, and red, which is the bullseye. Take a look at how Irene enjoys the game and how she intends to play it.
Irene appears to have struggled with the game, but she was able to win by striking the colors. Let's look at the chances of winning this game. For this game, we will apply and use the sampling distribution, because there are numerous mechanisms involved in sampling distribution. Let's start by looking at the stages involved in creating the sample distribution of the means. The first step is to calculate the number of possible samples that can be drawn from the population using the formula n combined n, where the big n is the population size and the small n is the sample size. The second step is to create a list of all possible samples and calculate their mean sample. The third step is to create a frequency distribution for the sample we took. The fourth step is to create a probability distribution table based on the frequency distribution. How likely is it that you'll win this game? Using our formula, doc n combined n, we first need to determine how many possible size 3 samples can be drawn. Because the population of our given colors equals 5, our big n is equal to 5. Because the participants are allowed 3 darts to try, our small n is equal to 3. We'll get 5 combined 3 by substituting 5 factorial over 3 factorial multiplied by 5 minus 3 factorial. We can now obtain our 10 possible samples from this. Thanks so much for the wonderful explanation. So what are we waiting for? Let's go on to our next game. Let's go! Miss Francine to introduce us the card game. Hola, the next game for tonight is called Card Game. It is one of the most popular games here in our Copy Carnival because you have the chance to win three times depending on what card the ball will land into. Here's how to play it. You'll place your bet on the board with the signated cards and the ball will shoot in a small embudo. Then it goes down to a plastic rectangular board wherein the cards will randomly arrange. The probability of winning to this game is 5 to 10%, but this can be increased if the player knows how to play it well and if the player memorizes where the ball always lands. The secret of this game is the ball always lands in the four corners and rarely lands in the middle. It is a very fun and challenging game to play. Thank you, Miss Francine. And last but not the least, for you to understand more the game, I will explain it by myself. So moving on to the next game called Stand Up the Bottle Game. Our Copy Carnival includes the game Stand Up the Bottle. This is a classic game that keeps cats challenged even though all you do is simply slip the ring over the bottle and try to get it to stand up that makes a true test of skills and concentration. In order to do this, you must get the ring around the bottle Gently lift the bottle about one-third the way up and then lean straight in keeping the ring on the bottle. The probability of winning this game is actually closer to 1 over 3 which is 33%. But if you have skills on this game, the probability or chances of winning may be increased. The key is to lean straight in. Don't lift up. If you lift up, the ring will come off the top of the bottle and the bottle will fall to the ground along with your hopes and dreams of being a carnival game hero. You must lean straight in, keeping the pole as steady as you can, not going too fast, and keeping the ring in contact with the bottle. We hope you have a good time at our copy carnival and that you pick up some new tricks for winning those games. Thank you for visiting. Once again, next time, See you and bye! bye. bye.